And we are live. Yay! How exciting. Hello, everybody. I don't know if people are in yet or we're still getting it's not showing anything yet. But if you guys are here, say hello. Because <laughs> <laughs> we can't see. Usually I have um um oh, hey Cynthia. Um uh, uh you know my friend oh, um okay. Rosaline monitors, but it's her birthday today. Oh, okay. So yeah. Um and I, I asked my husband, but he's all over the place too. So hi Cynthia friend. Oh, there's my husband. <laughs> your husband monitors like my husband does on my lives on Instagram. He watches all of them, like all your he goes watches all your lives That's with you. Yes, usually he does. Yeah. yeah so usually. are you are you a, a all boy household like I'm an all boy household? Yes. Don't you love it? <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. Well, I yeah. Sometimes I, I also need some. Yes, it's too much <laughs> to cluster on, and yeah, and the boys usually defend him. <laughs> right. <laughs> But that didn't say any. It, that didn't say it that way, and I'm like, he did. He didn't li <laughs> listen. <laughs> even even the pets are males in my house. Oh, are they? Okay, so we have we have two females, but we also have like five animals. So I mm -hmm. guess the two the two we have a female cat and a female dog, but you know they don't contribute very much. So <laughs> <laughs> what five animals do you have? Cats, dogs, what else? Okay, so I've got two dogs, two cats, and a tortoise. Oh, I love tortoise. I used to have one. Yeah, a desert tortoise. So is, uh, his, her name's Shelly. So she's the easiest one in the household. She's really I like, bet. yeah, especially is the she a land tortoise, or is she a well, land, yeah, yeah. land a desert tortoise, tortoise, not a turtle? Yeah. Eventually, we're gonna move her out of her little terrarium and have like a habitat. And you can in Vegas, you can let them like roam in the backyard. Oh, that's so, so cool. But you know, they dig, right? Don't they dig? Yeah, they burrow. So you want to make sure they have like stuff to burrow underneath. And then when it gets too hot, like when it's, I think over like a hundred, if it's over a hundred people, I I used to be in like tortoise groups on Facebook and people bring them in the house and put little diapers on them because they get big. They yeah. Get, they get huge. And um, so yeah, she, she's the easy one. She's the, oh, so I have three, three so females, cool. a cat, a dog and a tortoise. And <laughs> How does the duck and the dog get along? Um, everybody everybody gets along fine for the most part. <laughs> Our cats are just kind of like leave us alone and we'll leave you alone. But that's cats. Oh, that's cats. <laughs> yeah, my my kids and my husband want cat, but I have a. I mean, I like them, but I'm not a a cat person. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I, I don't I, want any any bad happen to a cat. You know, I, I want the cat to be happy. <laughs> But you're not, you're not all for like getting rid of them or anything. But yeah. I've never been a cat person. I was not a cat person ever. And then um, my husband had a cat. And then like when we like like started dating and moved. Then we got a cat together. And the only reason like I was not a cat person, but it was a kitten. Everybody's a kitten yeah. person. Like I'm like, of course I want a kitten because he wouldn't say yes to a dog. They're so cute. <laughs> and then he said yes to two dogs. <laughs> Well, we already had the two dogs. Oh, okay. okay, okay. So at the time, I think we had three. We're animal people. <laughs> <laughs> we have a dog, he's five. We got him when he was two months old and we have a bearded dragon who is just turned one this They're year. They're fun, huh? Yeah, they are so fun. And we got him when he was like this big. He was one ounce. Now he's like seven ounces and he's like this big, like, bulky and his face has gotten so big he's really fun There's, and the dog hates him i feel like bearded dragons look like they would be really like they would have hard skin but they're very soft so like when they you talk, are, especially right? on their beard yeah they're cool they're really they're really cool yeah he's he's really nice he's a really nice guy they just don't get along the dog and the bearded dragon don't Ooh. max doesn't like him they just gotta like you show it to him and he's like <laughs> I'm not looking at him, I'm not acknowledging him whatsoever. <laughs> he is not, yeah, he is not going. This is not gonna work. <laughs> he leaves. <laughs> so okay, so guys, you know Jessica is 
amazing love her post i think we all love you we all love your posts they're so fun and sometimes in your face and you don't care and i love that i don't care. and i'm like oh no she didn't oh she did <laughs> and i love i love that i also love the fact that she has more than twenty thousand followers she will answer to all the messages she engages I try to. Um, she I, will follow you back. <laughs> and, you know, it's she has all these followers, but she's still one of us. Does that make sense? Like, it doesn't matter if you have a thousand followers or 500 or seven or whatever, you know, it's because I know there are some Instagrammers that, and I know. <laughs> that are more than 15,000 and they won't respond to messages, they won't respond to comments, they won't even bother looking at your Instagram. Um, and I, I really, really like that about you. And and there are more like you that, you know, we follow like the, the Posh Kings and Leslie and um, Violet, you know, Jasmine and, and a lot that do that. But I know them and I didn't know you and I wanted to, uh, in, interview you and also saw a post that you did that last year i think you were at less than ten thousand followers and in like two three months you went to 12 or fifteen thousand because you were posting three times a day and doing all of that and so that's also it was we wanted. october to january ish more or less, I went from about 700 followers because my account was my personal account. Um, mm -hmm. I ended up deleting, like I, I was into all sorts of stuff, honestly. Like I had, it was my personal account. And um, so I'm sure a lot of the people that like went to high school with me probably unfollowed me because they're like, why is she <laughs> posting about, she's crazy. Like she's, but I, I honestly, I was posting about keto a lot. Um, I was posting about, you know, just stuff in my life and then um, I had dropped out of all social media completely because I was over it. Like I was over the negative, just, just energy. Like there's a lot of negative energy, which I've learned is just like, that's why I'm a big advocate for keeping your feed clean and keeping your feed, you know, positive. And just, if you're, if somebody gives you negative vibes, like unfollow them, don't feel bad. It is your mental health. Ment this, this entire game can be very mental health exhausting. Draining. Yes. Draining. Draining is a great word. And I think um, there's no manual for how to deal with this. Like if you look up stuff on, you know, building a social media following, I'm telling you most of the stuff out there is fake. Most of the stuff out there are people pretending to have built a social media following and they're giving you people advice, but um, some, you know, for whatever the case. Anyway, so yes, from October to January, I, I did, I crossed that 10,000. And then I think it slowed down a little bit because I just hit 20,000 followers, I think a couple weeks ago, which, it, you know, I feel like it's still a huge milestone, but yeah, yeah. I definitely, uh, a huge part of that is being active. And I think we're seeing a shift right now with Instagram too. So while I feel like posting on your feed as much as possible is still super important. I think that Instagram right now is stressing using all of their features, um, especially lives. I, I mean, I'm telling everybody, if you want to grow on Instagram lives right now, I think that's where everything's going to shift towards. Okay. And they're um, even putting a new a new tab on Instagram for lives. So they're gonna there's going to be like a tab, just like there's a shopping tab and you can yeah. go it's gonna be like live now and people will be going through that live now because people, I think people really enjoy lives. They feel like they're hanging out with their friends, right? They feel like they're seeing a peek into your everyday life. Mm -hmm. And um so yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, obviously posting three times a day is important, but staying really on top of the new um, features Instagram is offering, just like Reels. Reels is also great. Yeah. They're pushing that a lot. But I, I think almost Instagram Live has kind of taken the forefront of Reels even at this point, or at least they're at least even. Mm -hmm. How do I deal with the haters? <laughs> Please do tell. I, I'm, I'm, I have to say, I'm, I'm glad I haven't gotten any. But I also don't post the, the the most that I've noticed is that when I post something kind of raunchy or you know like a joke, people unfollow me, and I'm like, if you can't take a joke, I mean, you know, if they can't take your sense of humor, you don't want them following you anyway. Yeah, 
Because then you have to pretend to, you know. To um, be someone that you're not. Yeah. And that's, you know, the... I'm at 20,000 followers and I am nowhere near where I would like to be for my social media career. So if we can put that into perspective, these people that are sitting back and really, you know, just making hand over fist on their social media platforms from, you know, hopefully ideally from being authentic and stuff, um, that's going to be years down the road. I mean, we're talking 100,000 followers, 200,000 followers, like that's where I want to be. Yeah, so. Of um, I think pacing yourself is like important dealing with the haters. There's going to be so many. And before I did this, I've always tried to be transparent. Like I've been a co content creator. I've only been doing this, like reselling content creation since, since October, since whenever that was, I started and I was reselling before that, but my husband talked me into I swear I'm going to answer that question. I'm just, I have a roundabout <laughs> Go way. Go ahead. You, you are following um, so before I was, and then I was reselling. And then before I was reselling, I had a blog called Buzz Vegas. And I think that's where I learned how to deal with a lot of things like haters, because I actually wrote anonymously for that blog. I built that and I never showed my face up until probably the very end. And it was a lot of like food articles and just, you know, fun stuff. And that page is still on Facebook, but I'm definitely not as active on it. And we all know when you're not active, your engagement drops. But I've got almost 50,000 organic followers on that account. So at one point, that blog was really pretty active, like articles that I'd written made the local news, stuff like that. Oh, cool. And um, I think with that, I learned to take criticism a lot because there were a lot of articles People not even seeing me, not even knowing my face would criticize. And those are, you know, quote unquote haters. And so I, number one, learned to take away from that, that obviously I can't take anything personally from what they said, right? Because they yeah. didn't even know me. They didn't see my face. Um, and then psychologically, you have to just kind of look at it from other people's perspective too. I just try to have empathy for the people out there that are quote unquote haters that, um, you know, they... I don't think that all haters intend to be mean. If there are trolls that come out and say something directly really nasty to you, then they're just miserable people and they're from anonymous profiles. But if it's yeah. like a real person and they come out and they criticize you or critique you, usually it's not them intending to be mean or tear you down. It's just that they're lacking the social skills to be able to tell you what they're trying to tell you. So I think taking that in mind and sometimes just being like, you know, well, thank you for your feedback and moving on with your day is probably the best way to deal with it. But um, it's mentally training yourself like it's going to happen. If you have a post that goes viral, which happens all the time, people all over the place, like some of you, like uh, I, 90 Day Fiance, I talk about it all the time. And you watch the 90 Age Strikes Back, you know, and some of the stuff people say to these people are really horrible. Like, why would you say that to another human being? So it's, it's just mentally preparing yourself and being able to talk you down. And there's no point in fighting fire with fire. Like you're never going to change this person's opinion. If they don't like you, they don't like you. Like that's it. You just got to kind of move on. You know what but I mean? Do you erase? Do you erase their comments or what do I you will, do? I will erase comments because I have the right to do that because yes. it's profile. Your yes. As as I want to help people, you know, in, I, I have a right to erase anything. If you disagree with me, I have a right to erase it yeah. because it's mine. So um, I think that if somebody wants to erase comments, erase comments, you know, there's no problem with that. If you, I don't typically block people. I will occasionally, but it, it, if you're going to be doing this, the mental game, you have to be on top of it and you have to be constantly improving and mentally preparing yourself. It can be exhausting. And like mm -hmm. you were saying, I try to engage with I, and answer questions and stuff. And if people are building their social media profile, it gets to the point where there are so many that, I mean, it's just really important, I think, to mentally prepare yourself for it, like I said, and understand it's usually not about you. It's usually about them. About them. That's, yes. What about this? Exactly. Do you think that Reels make your account more visible to others? I will say yes. I think it does if you're using making, I think with reels, hashtags are very important. Um, and yeah, I mean, all functions on Instagram are going to bring, and I think with reels, what's nice too, is that uh, I feel some people feel like they're trapped into like this reseller niche community 
And I think reaching out on reels, especially if you, you don't necessarily need to do stuff that's reselling related to reach people that are not necessarily in your niche. So yeah. if you're somebody who's trying to broaden, I think it's a great tool to use. Yeah, me too. And also they show it. I've had a friend uh, telling me the other day, oh, I, I went to search and I saw your reel. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's good. So they show your reels when you go to search. Uh huh. Um, you know, reels will go from people that you might not know. And then if you think that's interesting, you'll follow them. So it's it's a great, great tool to, to do. And also, I like TikTok better. So if I do a TikTok, then I convert it to reels. And then so, post it sometimes. Yeah, I mean, we should. And then there's actually another one. Let me think of the name. Dub, sure. dub, dub, dub. I'm looking at it. Dub Smash is like a third one. Uh -huh. And what's nice about Dub Smash, if anybody's making reels or TikTok, because um, like obviously TikTok, it's, it's special. I think that the options for sounds are much larger on there. But I think cross posting between the three is a great tool because yeah. if you can multiply this content like do it like i think that's an amazing thing to do <laughs> so what about life do you recommend would you recommend because sometimes i want to post i don't know three four times and i'm like is that too much is that too much on on people's face i don't want to be like oh there's there's her again you know what i mean it's if they don't if they're sick of seeing you they'll unfollow you i post so much i don't think people realize how much i can i post sometimes i'll post six or seven times to my feed five or six times to my stories, maybe two or three reels and do a live in one day. So uh -huh. I, I think that um, don't be scared of people getting sick of you, but realize mm -hmm. that if you put up one post and it gets a hundred likes, even if you post five or six more times and it gets half the amount of likes, like that's a lot more engagement that you just wouldn't have had. That's true. That's true. Do you raise posts? I archive some posts. I don't like deleting stuff completely, but I will archive if sometimes if I don't, sometimes I post stuff and I'm just like, you know, this maybe could have been misinterpreted. This could have, you know, there are different reasons why I might archive, but yeah, I'll definitely archive stuff. And with archive, it's a feature Instagram offers where it doesn't erase your likes. So you still have that towards your like engagement rating and stuff. Not that that stuff really matters, but yeah. like it still exists. And if somebody shared it, like it's still out there, it's just not on your feed. Okay. Okay. Got it. I'm going to look on that into that. But it, do you, uh, and before we get to this question, uh, Cynthia's question, Cynthia always has the best questions. Um, yeah. If a post doesn't have as many likes as you would like, do you archive it or is it just because you think that it hasn't been received as well? Because sometimes people just don't see it and they don't like it. You know what I mean? Or they see it and they just don't want to press the button, which I don't know why people don't like pressing the button because it's just a button. You know what I mean? Because on post, you see that it had, I don't know, 575,000 views and you have 150 likes. And you're like, where are the other 400,000 people that saw it? You know what I mean? <laughs> so I absolutely think that um I think that you should celebrate your wins. So if having if you are somebody who gauges your success on your content through posts and they didn't get as many likes, I would that never recommend deleting anything, but I would yeah, go ahead and archive it. If it make like if you look at your feed and then all of a sudden, first of all, if somebody like most of the time your lower performing posts are still better than a lot of other people's posts. So I feel like yeah. looking at it that way yes. Yes. <laughs> um, can change your perspective on it. But if you'd like to keep your feed clean, and then maybe if you're somebody who's doing affiliate marketing or wanting to do brand deals, then yeah, it would probably benefit you to archive those lower performing, performing posts, but I don't recommend deleting anything because the more content, the better, even if it's only got a couple of likes, maybe one person who didn't follow you before sees that and the meaning behind it really resonates with them. And so they follow you because of it. Okay, that's great. Now, what it would be the best strategy to reach people, it's that's not in your niche. Um, use different hashtags. Um, reaching and hashtags are not about, I've always, I always used to say like it, hashtags aren't necessarily going to make or break a post in terms of engagement, 
But if you're wanting to reach people outside of your niche, you're going to use hashtags related yeah. to that niche. I use hashtag expert, which is an app. Um, I think it's like a one-time fee. You always want to make sure to double check all of the hashtags because sometimes it'll generate, ha I, I like to hand pick them because then I don't end up with something like insane that just doesn't go with what I'm doing. You know, you just want to make sure that all the hashtags that you use, if you were clicking on that hashtag to look at content related to that hashtag that your post fits under it. So if yeah. you're posting red shoes, don't use blue shoes as yeah, a hashtag. Of so yeah, yeah I would just say the best way to reach a new audience is to you know, use hashtags not related to that niche. But also remember that if you're really out there, see, you got to be very careful about what niche you're seeking too. Because, I mean, if your if your feed is all reseller content, then you know, not everybody's going to be interested in seeing that. You know what I mean? But what if your reseller, your feed is reseller, but you want to also do like, I don't know, good vibes and, or, you know, um, yeah, for sure. I do all sorts of stuff now. Yes, exactly. You, you do. And I, I try not to do that. And that's why that's one of the, the reasons why I called it an equal match because, you know, so, so unequal and all over the place that I, you know, want to talk about other stuff, not only reselling. So when I say, you know, I don't know, you're a boss and, you know, powerful women and whatever it's the hashtags will go. We'll mention some reselling, but most of it would be about women. Yeah. Or if you say, you know, it's a good day, you would hashtag it a good day, <laughs> you know, great day, good vibes, all of that. And a little bit of reselling, but most of it about the post is that's what you're saying, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and there's so many different profiles out there and I, I don't want to tell anybody how to run their stuff. You know what? If it's working, like go for it. Keep doing what's doing you. My advice is always just like the stuff that's been working for me and yeah. my perspective and how I look at stuff. But yeah, I definitely, I, I used to, there was a point, like if you scroll back on my feed where it was every single post was reseller related content. And I started just kind of looking at it and thinking like, you know what, this really isn't authentic to me because I resell, but I am, my entire life does not revolve mm -hmm. around reselling. I have before, like I said, before I did this profile, I was big on keto. I was big on fitness. I was big on all sorts of stuff. And, and you yeah. have kids and you have a husband and you have, you have a life and you have, you know, exactly. so that's and it just wasn't authentic anymore. So I switched it up and it seems to be working okay for me now. That's so awesome. I love that. I, I love your reels. Like, <laughs> so cool. Where do you have the time? Where do you? Where I, think, I think people ask me that all the time. My content is not pre planned. So when people say, like, how do I have the time? It's not like I'm necessarily making time. I am just doing it while I'm living my life. Does that make sense? Yeah. But do you. Like I, you know, I just came and put makeup. Do you do, do you like? Oh, I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna go to put makeup on, or do do you? Because there are women that do put makeup in the morning, and I, they. I, I probably I am a makeup person. Oh gosh, you're I, so I am, good. Yeah, I am a makeup <laughs> person. I I'm born and raised in Vegas, so like my entire twenties, I I've been wearing makeup like, and it is normal to wear heels to the grocery store here for me. Like it is just so I cool. don't every single day i have days where i wear sweats and i don't do my hair and i don't do my makeup and i wear glasses and i have videos of me not wearing you do, makeup. yes um but like the days where i'm wearing makeup um you know i i've started to learn that it i like the way i look when i have makeup on so i make the time to do it but it's no different than when i worked in a jewelry store and i got up like bef an hour before I had to be at work, I was getting ready and getting dressed because it, it and working from home, I, if, if somebody doesn't want to wear makeup, don't wear makeup, like do what yeah. you, you do. Yeah. Do you boo. Exactly. Do you boo boo. But working from home, I feel like it helps me mentally to get up and prepare for the day. Or when I, you know, treat it like a job, you know, get, get ready for the day. I still get dressed up sometimes, not every day. I still do yeah. my makeup most days 
Um, but it just, for me, it, this is how I that's, am. That's how it's where I'm from. I remember my mom, I'm from Peru and in Lima, everybody, but by 10 o'clock, all the moms are all made up, like ready to go. And no one worked, you yes. know, and, but everybody was ready to go because you, you know, if you went out, you, you never know who you're going to, you know, see when you are out. Or, <laughs> so, so, but yeah, it's, um, I don't, and I, I'm, I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to try to, you know, put makeup on in the morning. So I'm ready for any videos and I have done videos without makeup too. Um, oh, you know, I if I get something that I want to show, I'll do a quick video to post, you know, for what I got or whatever. But, um, and I feel like, um, when you don't wear makeup in some videos, you're showing the real you and people like that too. Uh, yeah, I think people like that. I think that, I mean, I've gone in a lot of times, like the, past, the a few months ago, I would say three or four months ago, there were a lot of videos of me not wearing makeup and a lot of videos of me sitting on the couch. And, and I was going through like health issues that I didn't really talk about like publicly, you know? Yeah. And um, so that was just like, that was this legitimately how I was for those days, you know, and on days when I'm not, you know, feeling great, I just don't wear makeup and days when I am, I do. But I, I yeah. like I said, it's, it's not something I do just for Instagram. It's just kind of so how you, I Yes, that, that was my question. You're, you are already done when you're doing those videos. Yeah, you should. <laughs> <laughs> Lo okay, love it. Um, Kristen says, I always like to see diverse things, personal mom stuff, cooking, reselling, everything. Yes. I mean, a lot of people use that also, the uh, diversity on their stories. I usually post more on my stories than on the feed. Now I, that after your, after your um, advice, I will be posting more on my feed. Get ready, people. <laughs> I don't know if it is as important as it was a year ago. Like okay. I think it's important to be posting. Um, and I just think you got to make the decision, which is better. Do I want this on my feed? Maybe it goes in my stories, you know? Yeah, well, yes, of course. Um, but I can say that like my stories, so many more, like I feel like I get way more interactions on my stories a lot of times than I do on my feed. So I, it's just, being active is important, I think, in general on the app. So whatever it's lives or stories or reels or posts, what about engagement, commenting on other people's? Oh, posts? yeah. I mean, that's important. I think that's important just as a human being. Like if people are taking the time out of their day to give you a compliment or watch your content, like I feel like it's important to at least go check them out, give them a few likes. Like, I, I try and do that. Like you, like you're saying, I, I, I try to do it, but I still can't get everybody. And I, it's like kind of a crap. No, it, no you cannot. You, if that's impossible. Yeah. I think it is, it's important though. Like, I think that that helps your engagement because think about it in the way, like when you have somebody who you, you don't know, like your comment on your stuff doesn't make you feel good. Right. And also yeah. it also helps with, a lot of times with content creators, sometimes people assume people are like competition or they don't want to go. And I feel like sometimes there have been times where I've kind of looked and I don't want to do this. Like nobody wants to judge people on their Instagram profile. In a perfect world, we love everybody that we see, right? But sometimes you're like, <laughs> oh, that looks like my husband's ex-girlfriend. I don't like that bitch, you know? Like, <laughs> Um, so, but then these people reach out to you and if they comment on you, you're like, oh, okay. I like them yeah. now. You yeah. Know? So yeah. I think that that makes, makes it, um, it's just, it's how you make friends, right? Nobody wants to talk to the cool girl at the party that doesn't talk to anybody, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then one talks to her and like, like we just said, you know, we were just talking about it and before we started and, and you're like, oh no, I, I've, I haven't done one of these. And I'm like, because people are scared to ask you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, guys, I'll go live with them. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, when and I, 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 I told Letty, um, cause Letty, uh, my, my sister-in-law, she's here and she's like, are you following just like space? And I'm like, no, she's like, oh my gosh, she's awesome. You have to follow her. Aww, it's so, so, so I, you know, and that's how I found you. And 
then when I told her, I'm like, oh my God, I just asked her. And, and she said, yes, <laughs> like, I'm, like, I'm, like I asked you to marry me. <laughs> Would you marry me, Jess? And, she, and she's like, oh, my God, that's so cool. So, you know, and I just asked another um, girl that I'm not going to say her name yet. Um, but and, and she's like, yeah, let's let's plan it. So if you guys have to you always have to ask. And that's what I always tell my kids. The worst that can happen is that people either say no or ignore you and you didn't have it anyway. So it's not going to affect your life. But if, if people say yes, you know what I mean? It can you know, come up to this or other stuff that um, can help you in the, uh, you know, help you at other people. Not, not, and not only, not only for life. I'm, I'm talking about in general. In general, yes. If you do not ask, if you don't play the lottery, you can't win the lottery, right? Exactly. Exactly. So I, I firmly believe that. In content creation, she loves like. <laughs> With content creation, I feel like you got, like, it's all about, a lot of it is making connections. And if somebody wants to be making money off brand sponsorships and they want to be getting free merchandise, the best mm -hmm. way to do it is ask, like reach out to these companies. You don't hit a certain amount of followers and people start banging down your door. Like, here's all this free stuff. Take it. Like, yeah. that's just not how it works. You, Definitely. you know, put together a media kit and you send it to people and Hey, you know, do you have it? And eventually when you get up to like a hundred thousand followers, yeah, people are going to be gifted merch. And you know, when you yeah. get upwards, I mean, I, you know, they're, they're reaching out to me now, but they were not for a very long time, you know? So it's just a matter I, of really reaching out to people and seeing what they offer. I get some, I get some, Oh, we've seen your profile and we'd like you to be a, a an ambassador or a sponsor. Or what is it called? I don't care. Really. I usually don't, because I don't have time. Yeah, I don't respond yet. to those. Like the, those ones usually are, um, they want to, I feel like a lot of them are um, drop shipping companies that want to usually, you buy something, for, they're doing it for Amazon reviews, I think sometimes. Oh, or, that too. Sometimes there's what? jewelry and stuff like that, but I yeah, just- or I, sunglasses or um, active wear or yeah. Mm -hmm. What about the people that send you messages with zero followers and they're, <laughs> they're offering you to get 50,000 followers in a week? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, everybody knows my whole thought. I, if people people are buying followers, it happens. Like, I, fe I feel like I've talked too much crap about people that buy followers, but I think that some people just, there's a lot of different elements to it. So I can't judge people for doing that. Yeah. There are people that, are just embarrassed, you know, and they're trying to put their best self out there and they don't feel like they could do that unless they look like a bunch of people already follow them. I just, I don't recommend buying followers. Um, also one thing not to do it, for sure not to do it is because, um, so I just, I became eligible for Instagram badges a few months ago, which means that if all my lives people could buy badges, just like on YouTube. And it's at Instagram's first, way to monetize it's their first uh option that so they're what is that? i saw that the other day but i what are you buying like if you I'm so um it's just like on youtube when people monetize you know people when you're doing a live people can buy a badge to support the creator so okay. i think there's three different options what well, like one dollar two dollar three dollar something like that and instagram matches it now oh. so it's really not it's a really cool option but they have in their policies because I went back and read them um, that if you if they if you are buying engagement or followers, you will not qualify for this. So they okay. know people are doing yeah. it. Obviously, they can tell people are doing it. Instagram's got their algorithm like that. They know what we're doing before we do it. Yeah. Um, so that's one reason not to do that. That's the first reason not to buy followers is because it could stop you from potentially monetizing on Instagram. But additionally. If a brand pays you money to sponsor them and finds out that half of your followers are fake, you can be sued for fraud. Like yeah. that's fraud. So and also, it's not. You know, I thought about it at that, the beginning. I thought about it. I thought at about the beginning, I think I was at a, a thousand. Um, and I because it, the first, I think my I'm at seven seventy five hundred right now. Um, thank you. Yeah. Um, the first thousand was like 
drops like you know it was it was hard to get to a thousand and then and that's when i was like oh my god maybe i should you know do this and then i was reading reviews and if you don't keep paying them the followers disappear oh yeah i didn't even know that but that's yes. A <laughs> yes and then you know and then they don't grow and then you'll have you don't have any engagement in your posts sometimes not even likes and that's super fake you know to have thirty thousand followers and maybe five likes in your post and two comments it's like where are all these people so you know i talked to michael and we're like no mm -mm. and then i got to 2000 did a um a giveaway that helped giveaways help yeah right? giveaways are great i think giveaways are great i think there's, I mean, at this point, it's like people buy followers. They, they do. And there's, I'm not going to persecute anybody for doing that, but I'm not criticizing either. That's it, it wouldn't work for me. And also my conscious, I'll be like, but this is not me. You know, I want people to follow me for me, you know, because I'm paying gets me and I try not to be salty, but we're all salty sometimes. Right. It would be, I would be unrealistic. Be salty, Please be salty. <laughs> sometimes like it would be unrealistic. So what, gets me is when I have people that just show up onto the scene and they have very obviously purchased their followers and they're, they're giving social media advice. That's what gets me because uh -huh. I'm like, you know how hard I've worked to get here. Yes. Yes. You know how, many, how much like my timer was set on my phone to post three times a day coming up with content. So sometimes when I see that I get salty and I will block people for that because it's like, it's like irritating that I work so hard for something. And then somebody just shows up like, bam, I just bought it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But it's none of my business. No, everybody else's account is none of my business. All, you know, mm. <laughs> that's, that's what sometimes, you know, when you see something, just keep it to yourself, whoever posted it, if it's to, I don't know, too much out there because there are some memes that are really out there just you know either laugh either just keep going like it if you unfollow. like it don't like it if you don't like it unfollow block whatever do whatever makes you happy but don't comment nasty stuff on people's posts that's not nice yeah, I mean, people do it <laughs> there's also you know we have a little bit of cancel culture these days too so a lot of people are looking to find stuff wrong with other people's profiles and stuff and it's like you know what if it's not your cup of tea just unfollow that's how i that's how i am i'm yeah. not gonna go out and share people's profile and be like look at what this a-hole no, said here. I've seen that it's like very p petty to do that i'm sorry mm -hmm. it is very petty to do that if if i don't like you or if i don't um we're gonna uh, guys are, uh, are asking about game trains and look I, ha I, I obviously wasn't very prepared but but game trains is here to talk about game trains soon um, <laughs> we're talking about game, uh, game trains and um there was something else here that i can't read my own handwriting but um i i, I lost it so let's go to game trains <laughs> <laughs> you were the creator of Gain Trains. I was. I yeah. I did the first Gain Train. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that it was going to take off like it did. And the funny thing is, the very first one that I did, like my uh, phone, I think had just start finished updating or something. So I came up with the idea, and I don't think that I'm the first one in the history of the world to do it. I think that I'm sure that there are other areas, uh, other niches on Instagram where I don't think that there's anything on social media that somebody else hasn't done already for the most part. Um, but in terms of like a reseller gain train, I typed it up in my Instagram stories and saved the image and put it up and, and it went crazy. It went crazy. And I think that I'm really happy that it helped a lot of people get past milestones of where they were. I, I wasn't happy with the kind of pettiness that came with it that I saw a lot of people getting like butt hurt because people unfollowed them and blah, 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 blah. I do not look at who unfollows me. I have no idea how many people unfollow me because if they unfollow me, it's like, bye, Felicia, whatever. Um, but I think 
I don't know. It was kind of cool. It was it was pretty crazy. It was it a really a cool thing. Day. I think I got like a thousand from game trains or maybe I, more. What happened was that it actually worked in the beginning. Now it, yeah. so much it doesn't work as much now. Yes. And now I don't because people start saying that because of game trains, people were starting to get hacked. That's not even possible. So that's because just other people see your profiles and you know they would get unless you your... it's not like people can hack you just from seeing your profile. They would need to send you a link and you would need to click on the link in order for them to hack you. So it's not like that's not even possible. Okay, well <laughs> that's cleared up. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's like a theory. I think people like like I don't know. It's just like, you know what? If, if you're not happy with the followers that are supposed to be like, like, you have to let the bad in with the good. It just happens. Like, there's always going to be bad in with the good. So you met a whole bunch of new people in the community. But yeah, it's, I, it's and not I think really that was the whole purpose, not only to grow, but to meet other people, because, you know, we're all here to learn from each other. And, and I'm sure everybody, you know, can learn, keep learning. We don't know everything. So we can keep learning. And broadening your your you know circle of instagram friends that was the whole point yeah and i think like the right color not colors. not only the follow the following but whatever comes with it you know like new friends and new knowledge and you can share and they can share with you and then it came to oh but they are not following me back or people just like oh, it and no not follow or i got in, in some jail because i follow too many people you know so well, that's, really, that's like that person's fault so instagram jail i've been there twice but i think instagram actually revised my profile because instagram jail happens because they think that you're using a third party bot to yeah. get followers which yeah. they exist. I don't recommend doing it, but they exist. So Instagram's trying to stop you from using a bot. So if you get a warning, stop engaging for like a day or two and just stop and leave your phone alone and you will be fine. Give it a couple days. If you continue to engage, you get put in Instagram jail and um, you're not there because you are engaging too much you're there because they think you're a bot so yeah. i have actually contacted instagram from instagram jail and they've let me out early because they realized like oh you know she's actually genuinely i said i'm at the point i got put in there all i was doing was answering my own comments <laughs> i wasn't even like imagine that um, so yeah i that's instagram jail happens and that's just if people are going to do it they need to do it in small increments you know there are a lot of problems that came with them but that's i mean that's just what happens i guess and i also know that they give you a certain amount of likes a day and certain amount of i guess comments a day and do they increase do you know if they increase with the uh how big so you are that chart that's been going around that shows like how many likes and comments and everything yeah. that you have per day that's not that's bogus that's another one of those things that people say are legitimate and they're not okay. because it's different because instagram's basing your numbers and your engagement on unusual activities so it's going to be specific for every person and if you start engaging more your number is going to go up of how much it's Allow you to go i knock on wood i'm knocking on wood if this happens when we get off the i'm gonna i'm gonna lose it but like i said when they let me out last time i was lucky enough and i'm not giving out her name because she was absolutely awesome to have a follower of mine who works for instagram okay. and um so she contacted them and was like hey you know she has a lot of followers she's organically engaging and i have not once and I am telling you, when I engaged, I just looked at my phone. Do you know how, guess how much time a day I spent on Instagram? Five hours is how much it's active. I do a lot of engaging. So I can tell you that those numbers of that chart, I bypass that all the time. I And I have not once, knock on wood, gotten a warning again. So it's uh, it's an algorithm based on your own personal engagement. That's not what on I thought. Yeah, and then I read that too. Yeah, and I read that too that it was those numbers, but it depends on how much engagement do you have. Yeah. Um, you have to be in a bracket, I guess. It's, it's bracket, it's different. Um, yeah. Do you do you you just say you didn't plan your posts, right? You just 
any of your posts. Occasionally, but not really. Like there may be like, I mean, not not plan in advance. There may be like, oh, I got a great idea. Let me go do this really quick. Um, when the shutdown happened here, I know that there was, you know, we drove to Goodwill when it was closed and I took a picture of me holding a sign. Like that was a little bit plan in advance. But I don't, I typically find, I used to plan stuff and I found that those were the lowest performing posts because people can tell when you're staging stuff. Yeah. Like I feel like but when you do reels, don't don't they look or, or TikToks, aren't they a little bit staged too? Because you um, have to act them, you know what I mean? I have to act them, but usually it's stemming somewhat from real life. There's some like that one I did the other day, obviously going to Trader Joe's. That one was staged, but that was sent to me by um Joanna. Jojo sent me a video of somebody doing something similar, uh -huh. like basically saying, like you could do this. So yeah. I did it. Um, so that one was a little bit staged, but like this morning I did the jump rope one. Um, I mean, I work out every morning. So it was just like something that kind of tied into what I was already doing. Usually most of those, it's stuff that I come up with. Like occasionally I'll come up with a song and be like, oh, I should go to Goodwill really quick and do this. But Normally, I would say like 95% of my content is stuff that I come up with like on the spot or right before I do it. I think, uh, listen, girls, <laughs> we just need to do it. No, <laughs> because no, I think sometimes you think so. I think sometimes too much, you know, like, oh no, but I have to do this. I know I have to do that. And now I have to, you know what I mean? So, oh, I have to do my hair or I wanna do this, but this has to be done, or I have to change. So you said you, you're ADHD, sort of, right? Yes. You said you're kind of all over the place. So all I am very place. much like that. I cannot plan anything. I can't plan for the life of me. I couldn't plan if I tried to. I used to keep a content calendar, but I'm like, I'll, I'll follow it for a day. That's just, um, I mean, I, I'm like that. I'm all over the place. Thank goodness my husband is like very on the straight and narrow because like he hands me post-its and is reins me in and makes me do stuff. But if like I was left to my own devices, I'd be everywhere and I'd have my hand in everything and nothing would get done, which is something that happened. When I'm, it comes sorry, to, I'm sorry to interrupt. So my husband's um, comment about the notes, I just wrote them when we were in here. Because <laughs> he's like, you didn't show me your notes. <laughs> I've been writing notes while we've been talking. So... <laughs> There's your answer. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt. No, you're fine. I wasn't. I'm. I'm looking at the comments now. I'm like, oh, they've been going up. <laughs> um. So I. I don't even. Oh, so yeah. When it comes to Instagram, I think just do it. If you have an idea, just do it. And those are going to be the ones that are really going to go, I think, and and resonate with people because most of those are going to come up while you're living your day to day life. So it's also yeah. more relatable. Yeah. True. I had uh, actually we have right now our living room is full of shoe boxes and I was going to do that the other day. And I don't know what happened. Sometimes I do want to do it and I'm like, OK, I'm just going to sit there and do it. And I don't know, one of my kids calls or I think about something else and then I forget. And, you know, then I move the boxes and it's not there anymore. And sometimes that happens. But um, I'm going to plan to just just do it. <laughs> Just do it. I see a lot of creators that have beautiful content, beautiful websites and beautiful feeds and it's all aesthetic and it's gorgeous. But then like they're not creating content like hardly ever. And you yeah. cannot create too much content. You can't look at Gary Vee. Have you ever heard Gary Vee talk Love about how him. much content? Yeah, he's amazing. Yes. I thought he was full of shit. I did Me think and then, like the more yes. I listen, I'm right. He's he's I think he's on to something. Yes. And he talks about content and how much content he creates on the daily. Yes. So like and engagement. And he said when I he started, it. he used to go to people that he didn't know and comment on everybody in his same city, I guess, on the hashtags and comment and comment and comment and comment and comment and hours. Because Insta it's mm -hmm. it's like you're a reseller and an Instagrammer because it's a full time job and because of not only your posts, but the engagements on your posts and the engagements on other people's posts, you know, like your friends post. Now you also want to comment on your friends post or something that you like because you want to give that to 
you know to others we all started we all started somewhere or you know with zero so let's help each other out and comment on people that's super important and it's a lot of work like what you just said commenting i would not 100 percent. i can hear my husband listening to this downstairs so he needs to know i could not do what i'm doing and do reselling too i couldn't because without help he helps me out so much with paperwork and all that other stuff i wouldn't be in he you know with relux he handles all my e outgoing emails i want to have you back for relux what i'm sorry i want to have you back for relux because i want to do one with resellers that have created something and i actually downloaded your the app and it's so <laughs> barbie cute love Thank it you. um it's not functional as much as I would like it to be. So there's a lot of changes going to be going on there. I think. Oh but yeah. Thank you for and this would be this would be maybe January or February. But I have three or four resellers that I want to talk to that have created, you know, stuff like that. Either for resellers or other stuff. So um, I'll let you know. She's coming back, guys. She's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me know. I'll write it down, and and I'll probably. <laughs> 10 times before it's time. <laughs> I love that you're also HDHD, even if you're not being di diagnosed. <laughs> if you're all over the place. I've never actually been diagnosed, but I am a chaotic person in general. So like everybody's like, you're all over the place on Instagram. No, that's, this is how I am. Like I am. And your life, yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah. my friends are like, how do, you, how do you, how did you get to 42 <laughs> so far away? <laughs> How are, how are you? You're 42? I'm 42. Just turned oh, 42 wow. now. Amazing. I never would have guessed that. I would have guessed, guessed you were like my age. So you look amazing. You got oh, a baby thank face. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have good jeans. There you go. <laughs> um, so we talk about gain trains. So you do recommend to keep doing gain trains or posting them? I think that gain trains could be beneficial, but I don't, what I saw a lot of people doing is focusing on gain trains for their growth and letting their content slide. And you can have all the followers in the world, but when you bring them to your page, you need good content to keep them there or they're not really going to give a shit about you. So yeah. I think that gain trains can be good, like in moderation, they're okay. If you see one going through, go ahead and hop on. But as far as making your entire profile based on it, and that's why I don't do them as much anymore. I did one the other day. I did a reel just because yeah. I wanted to see how it would how it would work out. Um, but I mean, I think probably the best thing. I think game trains need to go away for a little bit and then come back, like where we already have because the community is always getting so many new people into it. I think yeah. we can go away from it. It's not up to me. It's up to everybody else. And I just think if anybody's going to use it. Nobody's gonna hack you from joining on one. That's ridiculous. That doesn't even that doesn't it doesn't even work like that. But if you're gonna use it, I would say just you know, first of all, don't pay attention to the people that unfollow you. It's very time consuming to go through and check every single profile to see if they follow you. There's just a lot of time consuming things that could be spent in better areas. Like if it's gonna take you two hours to see who unfollowed you or followed you, you could have used that two hours to engage with like 120 new people on Instagram. Mm -hmm. and have I used to have an app because I was so into that. I really was very into that. And I used to have an, an app, I think it was called followers, but then the app caused something on my Instagram and I erased it and you could see who unfollowed you. So you can unfollow them because I used to do that. But now I'm like, you know what? It's whatever. If you're going to be doing this, as a career, like many people aim to do, you need to not worry about the people that don't like you. So going to the beginning yeah. where you said like, you don't care, it's because I cannot worry about people that don't like me and for what reason. And if yeah. you do care about people liking you, this is not the career for you because I don't care who you are. You could be like the, the you could be, I don't even know, the Pope, okay? And have an Instagram account and people are going to hate you. Yeah, It doesn't matter you are people are going to dislike you so if you are somebody who is sensitive about people unfollowing you and not liking you this is not it it is yeah. not it and and <sighs> it gets worse when you start doing stuff like trying to launch a course or trying to you know it, it gets it gets way hairier and people get a lot more aggressive when you're dealing with money 
True. True. <laughs> Money. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and I think a lot of us, because I'm not, I'm not aiming to be an Instagrammer content. I'm aiming to be a resell. Well, I am a reseller. I'm aiming, I'm aiming to make to make more money as a reseller. Well, my husband and I, because we're doing this together now. Um, but also, you know, obviously, more followers, it's more exposure to your business, mm -hmm. right? And and that could lead to more sales. Well, Instagram, the number one reason to build an Instagram profile it's for sales marketing, it's free marketing. Yes, exactly. And so you can use that platform to launch whatever it is that you're looking to launch, whether you want to be, a, I just see a lot of content creators that are trying to be, you know, just content creators. Yeah. Just content creators. And it's like, that's great. But even the ones that are just content creators launch something from it, right? You're driving your traffic somewhere. Yes. So, but yeah. <laughs> True. Well, thank you. So you guys have any questions for Jess? Thank you, husband, for saying that I look like I'm 28. And thank you, Terry, for saying that I'm a, I'm a little girl inside, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I still haven't matured. I'm, I'm still 15. I think that keeps you young, doesn't it? Yeah. Have that little bit of kind of little girl on the inside still. I yeah, feel like, like not little, like, like, dummy little like little like <laughs> <laughs> like like teenager teenager is yeah. little <laughs> um yeah i was very passionate about people and following me but not anymore i'm i'm okay with it now <laughs> i'm really okay with it okay here let's oh, see you're very welcome always productions thank you for watching everybody and thank you for having me on and inviting me on this has been so much fun and yay i appreciate it i'm so happy you said yes and you came thank you for being my wife for an hour jess <laughs> you're very welcome thank you for I'm saying just, yes <laughs> you're very welcome it's late there huh Five, oh it's eight o'clock there eight o'clock here Eight. I'm sorry. Where are you? Where are Georgia. you? Georgia. Georgia. Oh, okay. Georgia. I've been to the airport in Atlanta one time. Really? It's huge. We have a train yep. in the airport. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very big. I think it's one of the biggest airports in the country. Yeah, because it's a so you're in a big part of Georgia. <laughs> it looks very pretty from the plane flying in. <laughs> There's a lot of green. We yeah, you know, we were we we Vegas is one of and uh, one of the parts of the country in my bucket list too. You've but never been oh. here? Oh. Oh. Carolina Wong. You gotta come and we'll meet up. Yes. Next <laughs> year when the vaccine is when we're all vaccinated. <laughs> when the when everything's calmed down a little yes. bit. It's yes. crazy to be out on the strip right now, but a lot of people are still doing it. But yes, well, we'll have to hang out when you come yeah. and fulfill your awesome. Yes, yes, your husband and my husband. There you go. <laughs> okay, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for watching, everybody, and thank you, Jess. Thank you. Have a great night. <laughs>